A teaching union is calling for an investigation into the effects of wireless computer technology in schools. The call comes as a controversial Swedish professor addressed MLAs about the potential risks. Government scientists say Wi-Fi is perfectly harmless, but the union says a safety first, safety first approach Today, is needed. This Here's... man told MLAs Wi-Fi should be ripped out of more schools. The information content you would get through a wire would be exactly the same, so the kids wouldn't lose anything, but at least you wouldn't take a chance on their future health. We have international guidelines, and it is well within those as such, and the equivalent is, probably to give people an estimation, of, using Wi-Fi for a year is equivalent to using a mobile phone for 20 minutes. The government's computer system is still not back to normal more than a week after being attacked by a hacker. We are told that no sensitive information was lost or damaged. But the Environment Minister Arlene Foster, who only found out about the breach last night after an inquiry from the BBC, says she should have been told earlier. Here's our political correspondent, Gareth Gordon. This is what met visitors to the planning services website in the early part the of early last on. week. But again, we need to know the full detail around this. We need to have it out there so that people can either be reassured as to the level of hacking that has gone on or other ways. This computer expert says none of this should come as a surprise. Incidents like this are happening all the time and increasingly so. All we can ever do as IC, IT specialists is keep one step ahead and ensure that our systems are regularly patched, up to date and we're doing all the steps needed to protect the data. The department responsible, finance and personnel, says they're hoping the full service will be restored within 48 hours, but not before a thorough check. Of course, hackers will hack and websites are vulnerable. Though there's no doubt this episode has severely embarrassed civil servants who are determined that it won't happen again. The problem is, there are probably hackers out there who are equally determined that it will. Garth Gordon, BBC yeah, Newsline. More of Stormont. that debate uh, shortly. Now, going back to that breach of computer security here at Stormont that Arlene Foster was talking about earlier, it leaves some of us who are a bit computer illiterate a little bit mystified. We have to admit that. Someone who has some answers for us is Uni University of Ulster expert Dr Kevin Curran. He works out at the McGee campus and he joins us from FOIL now live. Uh, you're very welcome. Uh, the minister was saying to us earlier, Arlene Foster uh, said that uh, she felt that essentially this was a good news story because although obviously we have the news of someone trying to hack into their systems, uh, their security system seemed to be in place and there wasn't much damage done. Is that uh, a fair assessment of things? It is. <clears throat> At least we can see that this is a web server, which the whole purpose is to serve up documents. The language that's used, and maybe that's part of it, uh, it, it seems to sort of uh, inflate perhaps uh, the severity of these uh, sorts of situations. We talk, uh, as you've just done, about an attack. We also talk about uh, viruses on the internet. The whole issue is about security. Now, obviously, serious issues, um, but uh, do we have a tendency sometimes to, to sort of get a bit too excited about it? Y yes, we do. Y yes, indeed. Especially in this case, I guess because the planning service is named in it. And straight away people think of planning applications, which rightly people want to keep private or they can be controversial for n numerous reasons people don't want. However, obviously in this case, the planning services website doesn't do online applications at the moment. None of these details that we know of would have been stored there on the website. It simply would have been information for the public to how to conduct a planning application and what to do with appeals, etc. Uh, Kevin uh, Curran in uh, McGee there. Many thanks indeed. Well, uh, that's uh, perhaps uh, some insight Hi, into me, then, On BBC One, it's time to join the BBC's news teams where you are. Goodbye. Hello, good afternoon and welcome to BBC Newsline. An investigation has begun into how a computer hacker managed to crash a number of Northern Ireland government websites last week. The sites, including the planning services, were out of action for a number of days, though it said no sensitive information was lost or damaged. Well, Dr Kevin Curran is a computer expert from the University of Ulster and he joins us live from near McGee campus. Now, the government say nothing, no sensitive information was lost or damaged, Dr Curran, but how serious would you say this breaches for the public? Well, they're always serious. Um, at the moment, we don't know whether this is discriminate or indiscriminate. We don't know whether th these were targeted or just an indiscriminate targeting, like a denial of service, where, where information is sent to hold, to bring down a web service so that I can't serve up web pages. What, what we would say, although we don't know the information yet, that this is a web server, and the whole reason for a web server is to serve up web pages to the public. I would expect that any secure documents, any internal staff documents, any other um, 
private information is held on different, in, different servers, different computer systems, and the two would not be merged. But until we know further details, we can't be sure exactly what was leaked or whether or not it was actually targeted or just a plain attack to bring the service to a halt. So do you think that people should be on the lookout and check bank accounts, change computer pins, etc. as a result of this? Well, people should always be keeping an eye on their bank account, always. They should always be changing pins as well and having pins which are not the same, having at least eight letters, a mixture of numbers, uppercase, strange symbols, as complicated as it can. Sometimes we bring people in and we show them how easy it is within minutes to attack most passwords that ordinary people use. So you can never have a password which is complicated enough. Although in practice, in the, in, in the real world, it's very difficult to have a lot of passwords. But if people could have at least one password or a number of passwords which do vary the, the amount of characters and the style of characters which they use. Dr. Curran, thanks very much for taking the time to talk to us today.